Okay. Are there any questions so far? Okay. So you should have a pair of scissors in your bag, so you're going to need those. a bag in front of you that has some wire in it and it should have a boot in your pan and there's two type two colors of wire and so there should be a tan and a, and a green wire. If you don't have both let me know. I'm gonna help her to catch you some. Does everybody have all the materials? Okay so before I started doing the demo I just wanted to tell you a little bit more about myself. Um, I'm a retired floral designer. I used to work for the LDS Church and I worked on Temple Square. Um, the church has its own department that does flowers for a general conference and all the auxiliaries that have events and um, just a number of things that they do. And so I put together a slideshow that's running in the back, which I don't want you to watch when we're actually doing our hands on stuff, but it's it's basically a pictorial history of what I've been able to do while I was working for the church. So I had some pretty unique experiences uh, for the general authorities um, on different projects. I did Christmas there. Um, so anyway, I'm sorry it's at the back, but we kind of had to troubleshoot a little bit today. And, um, and we'll probably stop running that at some point. But if you have any questions later or want to ask any questions about what I did, I'm happy to answer your questions. I feel like I had such a unique experience as a floral designer working for the church on Temple Square that um, sometimes I'm, I'm still pinching myself to, to see, did it really happen? Did I really work there? So um, I love flowers. And if you've read the blog, you may have seen a little bio on me that um, kind of tells how I got into floral design. But that you have to look up because I'm going to today. We have a lot to do. And so I'm going to just quickly show you. Um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and do the centerpiece first. And this basic recipe is really fun because it's very fast and it only requires you could get by with only two elements if you wanted which I have roses and I have hydrangea and so um, unfortunately it's hard to teach principle in this kind of setting with limited time so I'm not going to do too much of that but um, this style is called all around some designers call it a roundy moundy because that's all it looks like, it's just a little ball. And so there's just little different things that you learn as you cut on an angle so that your flowers drink up the most water possible. And it's usually in a um, a number of three, five, and eight. Those are the design numbers. So triangles are also a part of that. Now that's, this is unusual. I've never had a multi-stemmed hydrangea like that. You usually get a single, single head. So this is like, I got a bonus. <laughs> this, is, this is really neat. So, there's a dead head on there. So. so what I did, and you probably can't see it, but I used clear tape on the glass face to provide a grid. And that helps hold the flowers in place. I can do it without a grid, but um, I can do it without a grid but it usually is a pain in the neck. And we'll take advantage of the extra steps. So 
hydrangea is one of my favorites. Come on, stick. So basically, you're supposed to have five stems. And if you do, you pretend your base is square, which this is one that is not, is I place um, as if it had four corners and the one in the center, and it gives me the roundy, moundy look. So a lot of times when I have a clear base, I will do ribbon, and I usually do it beforehand to decorate it. So like I have some burlap ribbon, and you can use um, wire, you can use leaves. Moms have enough party or you want to experiment. Do you a cluster of three? Sometimes you can do two together if you place them in the right position. So I kind of step up. There's the three, and there's the two. So if I had vines growing in my yard, I could wrap a vine, tuck it in the base, wrap the vine around, and you kind of make it really interesting. But today I have a little bit of rice flour to accent what I'm doing. So basically what I've done, and I know it's hard for you to see, but I've done a cluster in three different places and they make a triangle. This is rice flour. It's really fun. Um, you see a lot in wedding work. really pretty to add to the areas where you've added roses. Especially if, you, if your hydrangea has any kind of holes in them. Taking the time to throw on some ribbon. I could have done silver with some wire around it. It looks kind of like a wedding type thing. Or if I wanted it to be a little more rustic, I could have done burlap. And I'm not doing it just at this point just because, just because we don't have a lot of time. But there it is. It's a basic roundy boundy. And, and you don't have to add ribbon don't want to. Um, I think it's pretty as it is. Anybody wants to walk around with it, you can. So you can kind of get an idea of what that looks like. So you see that that one can go together pretty quickly. Like little cheapy floral knives at the wholesaler. 
could probably get, I'm not sure if they have them at like Michael's or any of that. They usually, you know, sell pruners. The only thing about pruners, they're, they're made for like woody stems. And I mean, this is more technical. A knife gives you a, um, a cleaner cut where this actually compresses the stem. When you compress the stem, not as much water goes in and it won't last as long. So most really good floral designers use a knife. Um, good question though, thank you. Any other questions? That centerpiece? This type of centerpiece should last by several days. <coughs> All right. So, um, how many have made a boutonniere before? Anybody? Nobody? Okay. Um, what's interesting is your boutonniere is kind of what you're going to do over and over again today because you're going to do that to make your flower crown. It's just slightly different. So, I'm going to steal from you. So everyone should have a little short little snippet of rosemary. It smells really good. And you should have a little short snippet of bay leaf. And then in your group of flowers, you should have some thistle. Okay, so if you look at your thistle, I'd find a really pretty um, blue one that has pretty much a lot of color. Um, doesn't have to be super big, but you, we're going to end up using those for your blue hair. So, and then you should have your brown wire. You want to get that out. In the old days, when you used to make a boot here, you would have green wire and tape, and you used to wire everything, and everything would be covered with the floral tape. And we don't do that anymore. We kind of do something a little more natural so it goes a lot faster. And so, I need to walk around and do this. But, So what you're going to end up doing when you're ready to do your boutonniere is then I just take my scissors and cut it so there's about maybe an inch or inch and a half of stem left. So it's about that big. And then you take your little boutonniere pin and you stick it into the, the wire and it's ready to go. Your date palm or whatever. Okay. And this cute little boot here. Pretty easy. Ta da! You may want to shorten yours just a little bit. my yard, which is the little thing that looks like a little succulent. You have a little bit of that. You have the thistle. You have something called crinkle pit. 
the stuff. And then you have your black flour. So what you're going to want to do is prep all your flowers. So in the case of the bay leaf, you probably want everything in a similar shape, like two to three inches, little pieces of bay leaf. And I would just cut and clean and lay them out on the table. Like so. Okay, so when you have a long stem, I know you're wondering about that. So you'll see some pieces that actually jut out. And I didn't have a whiteboard, so I can't draw it for you. So you'll have a big long stem, and then there's pieces that jut out. What you can do is take your scissors just above those pieces that come out, and you can cut those up and down the stem like that, so you can have the pieces probably about the right length. This one I, I got a little bit long, but so if you cut just above where they go like this, you will probably have like there's a cut piece. It has some jutting out from it. And I cleaned it off so I have a lot, a little bit of stem to work with. And then I have this left over. So out of that I got one stem, I got six pieces. Which is pretty good. Okay, any questions on cutting the bay leaf? Just make sure that you have a little bit of bare skin underneath. Just like the boot here. Okay, so the crinkle pit, um, it has like random shoots. So you have little pieces like this. As long as you have some stem room, you can cut them apart. Some of them you can actually cut. It's hard to show you without a. So, like, I can actually cut it apart here because there's a really long one in the middle and get one long enough. And then sometimes there's just a bunch of really short ones together. Leave those together. That's fine. But I can cut the middle one out. See all these short ones together? I just cut the big tall one out of the middle. And I'm showing you, if you want to come up and see what I'm doing, then you can help the girls to make sure they're doing the same thing. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking, taking some of the longer stems. I kind of have these random looks. So this is too short to cut, but I can use it as a group. The little one might be okay. The little one. So I'm cutting about two to three inches worth. So like if you do these, you see some like this. That one's long enough by itself. And so is this one. And that's how you cut them. And then you can cut this like this. You see that? Okay. So you can just kind of point it out to the girls in the back because I think they're they're not getting as much attention here. <laughs> so you just want to do it so there's longer stems. You know, two or three inches worth, and we can always clean off as we need to. Okay. All right, and then you can clean off some of the stem of the leaves. I'm just telling you how to cut everything to start with, so that you will understand your pieces. It'll go much faster if you have everything cut, 
and cleaned and laid out. Okay, so we have bay leaves, we have the little variegated sky, and then you have thistle and have so thistle, so you've already cut it once, is you probably want to cut it so you have at least an inch and a half or more stem, so like this. You can see that. So you have little pieces of thistle. And the ones that don't have flowers, you can use those too unless you don't like them. <laughs> it's perfectly okay. So you're gonna have a limited number of those. So when you go to think about how you want your crown to go together, you'll wanna to be selective in which would, what group you wanna put those thistles in. Okay? Now for wax flower, you've got some really long stem with a little bit of flower in there. These funky little leaves on it. So what you can do is you can cut all the little pieces that are about and have a long enough stem. I don't know if you can see where I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut these. So I have these little tiny fluffy pieces, and then I have now I have this big long one that I cut it off of. So I'm going to cut it also, but I'm just going to leave it about the same length, and then I'll trim it. So basically, you're going to do a lot of cutting here. Okay, and if you have some that have little, it's only just green ends, just, add, just cut them and include them. Green leaf um, can make it look really fluffy and fun and can give you a lot of dimension when you go to put it together. So, so I'm going to interrupt you, so if you would kind of put your scissors down for just a couple minutes, we're going to talk about how to assemble it, and then you can continue on with your project. So basically, you may want your neighbor's help if you want, but you're, you have your length of wire, and at one end, where, it's, where you have the holes, you're going to make like a little loop. You just kind of twist it tight, and I've got a little, a little loop on the end. So then what you're going to do is kind of twist the rest of it together. And don't twist too tight because it will break. So you're just kind of <coughs> doubling the wire. And if you want to work with your neighbor on that. So when you get that point, Kind of twisted it all together. You're going to measure your head and you're going to use your neighbor's help. So, what you're going to do is measure it to where you think it would work and you're going to insert the ends into the loop. And normally you would probably put the knot at the back, but I'm just doing this so you can see it. So, you're going to kind of slide it down. Don't make it super, super tight, but you want to snug. Okay, so you can measure it and feel like that's pretty comfortable. Put it back on my head. I know I probably look ridiculous. And slip it off and then you're going to wire the end shut. Do you want to show them that? And you can go all the way. so far. Okay, so um, once you get that ready to go, 
I'm going to take your materials and I'm going to look at them. Now, I told you before, you're really limited on the number of thistles. So, like, how you design it on your head is up to you. The, the easiest way to, to do it is to put everything in um, like evenly spaced throughout the whole design. Sometimes uh, professionals will do smaller flowers at the back, graduating into larger flowers, so the larger flowers in front. Um, we're probably not going to do that just because of the amount of material that you have. So what you're going to do is probably do your thistle groupings first. And it's almost exactly like using the boot nail. We're not going to make our flower bunches super, super tight just because um, it's just to give you an idea of how to assemble it. So I'm going to do the thistle with a bay leaf. And I just make myself a little, almost like a little boutonniere. Okay. And <coughs> Has anybody used a floral tape before? Okay. So you know there's a trick to it. Floral tape is not necessarily that sticky. So I find it easier when I'm doing a project like this one where I'm going to need both hands to tear off just a little piece, and it's the underside that's supposed to be the sticky side. So what I do is to make the boutonniere, or the bundle, is I fold it over, and I'm going to actually stretch it and mash those ends together. So I mash those ends together, they'll stick. are stuck together, I can start wrapping that, but I have to remember to pull this and stretch it out a little bit. So quick pull it, and it's not too long, you can wrap it around a bunch. And I will even up my stems. So you're not needing to do this yet, because I'm just showing you the steps that you can move forward with it when you're ready to. So I evened up the stems, and I'm wrapping the, the bunch. Okay. And it doesn't have to look perfect because it's going to get taped again. So then what you're going to do is you're going to assemble those and put them all together. So like if you like the wax flower with this guy, you can do that. And if the stems are too long, you can cut them. Make your little bunch and do the same thing as you tape it together. So I'm going to cut a little piece with my fingers. Sometimes you have to squish some things together to get the tape around it. So you just make a little bundle. So what you're going to end up with is a bunch of little bundles all over your table, okay? And you should, you know, mix things up a little bit. Maybe you'll do the white with the bay leaf, or maybe you want to do the white by itself. But you want to make as many little bundles as you possibly can, okay? Okay. Yes? I 
have these all the things we're using, we're not using these. You can use all that. Yeah, you've got them. Okay. And we include the little, the little sedums. We include those. And so what you're going to do is when you're ready, when you have all your bundles all prepared and laid out on your table, you're going to start going one direction only on your wire. Think about this where the hook is as your beginning. You're going to lay the bundles on. And you're going to have little pieces prepared. And this doesn't cut very well, so what I would say is just tear off a bunch of inch and a half pieces. And you want to go the same direction. Sometimes you have to tear it in order to start. Sometimes there's sticky scissors in between. So you're going to have to lay it on there, all going in the same direction. And you want to use your tape to cover up as much of what you already have. And if it doesn't cover the whole thing, um, you can either cut it off. See, I have this little tail. And I can't see, but there's a little tail here. Just one second. You can either cut it off or use a little more tail to secure it down. And then you do the next bundle, like to the right and then to the left. And then just go all the way around. Okay, question. Um, how many, like, little things um, You know, there isn't a certain number that you make, but I recommend that when you go to put these bundles on, that you do them loosely because there's not a lot of material here. So like my next bundle might be, it'll overlap a little bit, but not a ton. You could do them super tight if you have a lot, you know, if you had something from the yard where you had lots of material that you're going to do it like. And you can always add a little bit extra later if you've got a hole. But that's that's pretty much the idea. So does anybody have any more questions on how to assemble? No questions? No? Okay. Uh, then I'd say go for it. <laughs> we have about a half hour. So um, was anybody interested in learning what the split today? You know there's an extra fee. Yeah. Okay. So um, do you want to learn that right now? Sure. sure. Absolutely. And if you want to, I can have someone show it to you. Um, and then you can take the materials home if you want. Okay. So wants to add the five pounds is these two, right? Everything that's left on your table is all for you to use for your crown. You want to take your teeth yeah. now and secure this on. Okay? And there's always the thing, the flowers you want them on the outside. That's good. Excellent. Okay? Any other questions? No? Anybody feel they need any help? Okay. Just remember to keep your, your bundles all around the same size.
Yeah, um, it's hard to do this without proper tools. to start cutting that up to the next group or, or did you want to cut them? Okay. Well I can do it up here if you want to.
is that just for the next class or is that for the next class? Okay. So I figured um, I have three bunches. Three bunches for the last class. Three bunches for the second class. Okay. So you can take those three bunches and divvy it to 24. Okay. Is that not helpful? No, that would be okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that's the last thistle other than what I have on the front. So we're just going to see one of these. I have these up here too. Should we just grab one? Yeah. So then. There should be enough for at least 48 and more. Okay. I plan on more. So there should be. I should always have extra flowers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll put this one up here. some of the, the greenery. And if you want to take this off, it's not that hard. Yes. Yeah. It just, it just it'll come off right yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would you compact this a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, that? <laughs> oh. We didn't have any of that. Where'd that come from? Yeah, well, we figured on the same side. Yeah. The side which is your outer side. Yeah, so if you're putting it on the outside, yeah. So you're going to kind of go right and left. So you've got our altars overly laid out. We've got a pattern going. How's it going? Put it in. That's okay, that's okay. Um, that's up to you. have these longer pieces in, it's going to be a little bit, I'm going to do something that's going to help you with that, that particular okay. problem. So floral designers are magicians. I don't know if you've ever heard that phrase. We make things work. Sometimes we have things that just won't work to our, our will, so sometimes we have to make things. Change. So this is your blue, it's a floral blue dot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on the back of here. And when you're ready, you just pull this off. Okay, and you can stick it so it sticks together. And right because here. this is really long, it's going to jet out too far. Okay. So when you take this on, and you probably Take this on here so it won't have that gap and it makes the turn. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Great. 
Oh, we're doing uh, crinkle pit. Okay. okay, so this one I have to cut up too. So, and then this is a lean. Yeah, if you guys want more of that little um, sedum stuff, just let Melissa know and she'll bring you some. We have more. We have a lot. It's just a little, a little dirty because it came from my yard. But it's super cute. some more sedum if you would like and some more of this um, crinkle pit if you want to add that up into your groupings. So, okay, 
So class number two. This is all for number two. Is the role of tape because that's being used again in the other classes. But, um, everything else you can take with you. Okay? So, 